1978, John Carpenter presented his masterpiece, which would be the first of a very long series of sequels, Halloween. This was the very first Halloween movie that I ever saw, part one. And I probably saw it when I was about 12, 13 years old. And really, by then, I had already come accustomed to watching various horror genres slash sci-fi genres like uh, Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street and even Hellraiser to a certain extent. But it really kind of defined me in that Halloween, especially this one, was really my go-to series. Uh, It just kind of fit what I was into at the time. Um, All the rest of them seemed to be a little bit more on the gore factor, and I really enjoyed the way they established Michael Myers as, as a character, even though it did become more of like a gore type of scenario the longer the series went on. I just thought this was much well, much more balanced, much more well presented as far as a mixture of story and also horror slash gore. Now some could debate that the popularity or the success of the series was due to like the right mixture of a character built in with the story and maybe actors and whatnot, but I'm, I'm here to kind of break it down into one thing. John Carpenter is 100% fully responsible. I mean, I think he definitely made a good choice in his actors and the other people that contributed, but I think he's 100% to blame, I guess, what you want to call it, for the series to be so good. Uh, even though he was only really associated with the first one, kind of the second one, uh, you know, his... Him having just a forward thinking of having this kind of a story and character is why it's been able to go on sequel after sequel after sequel. So he, in my book, is is responsible for that. And if you look at his, you know, his back catalog of movies, I don't think I've ever seen really any of his movies that I didn't like in some way. Some are better than others, of course, but he's just excellent and uh, truly, you know, deserves all the credit for the success of this series. Now we're going to go through real quick because everyone already knows how this movie works basically. Uh, Michael Myers is the killer. He starts off as a child and he murders his sister and then they put him away and then he breaks out and then he basically fucks up a bunch of uh, teenagers along the way of him going to kill his other stepsister and does not succeed and his doctor Dr. Loomis basically is able to somewhat stop him, and uh, it ends on an a awesome cliffhanger where he is shot and he falls out a window, and you see him one minute on the ground, and then you go back, and he's not there, and it's that whole thought that he's still out there and how was he able to survive. So a lot of questions were basically put up there, and it was it was a great, great type of ending. Uh, I don't think they ever really meant it to be uh like a sequel or anything it just it fit right of course it left itself open for sequels but it was just perfect the way they did it and uh and that was part of john carpenter's masterful thinking i think on that one now if you've never seen any of the halloween movies and you want to sit down and watch one definitely watch part one you can pretty much forget all the rest of them and your life would be complete not to say that they're bad but you don't really have to watch any more past the first one so if you just had to choose one, do the first one. It has the best story, the best characters. And if, and if you never saw anything after part one, it would kind of leave you wanting to know more about the story. And that's part of the magic of the first one. Once you kind of know when you go on to two, four, five, six, seven, eight, it, it kind of diminishes the first one a little bit. So just watch the first one. Uh, you won't be disappointed. Jamie Lee Curtis, terrific actor. Uh, Donald Pleasance, Dr. Loomis, again, terrific. Uh, you can't go wrong with watching the first one. Uh, so I, I definitely recommend going back and taking the time to watch it. I don't know if it's necessarily held up as good as it did when it came out. Because um, it, it definitely is a bit dated now. It's past, you know, 30 years. So it the style of horror movies has totally changed. But I still think it's, you know, worth a worth a watch. And you'll definitely enjoy it. So we're going to move on to part two now, and uh, we're going to see how that one fared against part one. Universal Pictures presents All right, so Halloween 2 came out in 1981. Uh, I definitely went to seek Halloween 2 after I saw the first one, uh, logically, but it, it just doesn't do it for me. And I know some people may hate me for this, but it definitely is not as good as the first one. Probably nothing ever will be, but 
out of all of them, it ranks kind of low on my scale of uh, ones that I'll go back and watch again. Just because I think the writing isn't as good. Some of it's pretty corny. I, I don't like the idea of the hospital. Um, Jamie Lee Curtis's character is definitely dumbed down. But on the positive side on that, Donald Pleasance basically takes over as the lead actor. Um, so you get more invested into his story and, and you kind of watch his deterioration in this one. Uh, where he basically starts slipping into madness, I guess, as, as he continues on through the series. And uh, I really think he's a stronger and more interesting character than Jamie Lee Curtis's character was. So in that sense, it's good. But a lot of the stuff with the hospital is, is kind of kind of weak to me. So And then they also stood, stepped with the gore factor and then it changed the dynamic. So, I mean, if you needed a part two to finish it off. But I, again, it's not something that I really enjoy watching. Oh shit, I just got a comment too. Did you see some of the shit in this trailer that we're watching here? For Christ's sake, the chick just flicked out because someone put her put a hand on her? Fuck Jesus. And then uh, <laughs> the thing with the tire, I don't know, this this trailer's pretty bad. Uh, whether it was the cat being thrown to people or any of that crap, that's, I don't know, <laughs> it's pretty stupid. Holy shit, I guess I didn't see that glass there, you know, I wish I could just walk through some fucking glass. That would be a real expensive day, wouldn't it now? <laughs> Glorious! But, you know, Halloween 2 adds some really good closure for Jamie Lee Curtis's uh, character and also for Donald Pleasance's character. And additionally, it's probably the most definitive final ending for Michael Myers as he gets burned alive here in the end in uh, what is actually a really cool uh, ending scene. Fuck. Shit. Bitch. Fuck. Shit. Bitch. Well, yeah, that's pretty much... He's dead, so... Um... That's where they should have ended the series, but of course they just kept going on, and what was nice though is Halloween Part 3 was really a departure from the actual uh, series with Michael Myers. They tried to turn it into something else, which I thought was actually really genius, and uh, unlike most people don't like Halloween 3, uh, I actually think Halloween 3 is actually a pretty good movie. I think the only problem with it is it probably shouldn't have been called Halloween 3. It should have been its own movie, which, you know, the full title was Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. Uh, I think a lot of more people would have been receptive to it had they just called it that and not labeled it with Halloween. Just because most people, when you say Halloween, you can't not think Michael Myers. But I can see where they were going with it, so I definitely think it was um, brave on their part to do that. But at the same time, I think that's why a lot of people hate it. But let's go ahead and take a look at that one. One thing I want to say about Halloween 3, forget that it's a Halloween movie and take it for what it is and you'll enjoy it. If you think that it's going to be a Michael Myers movie or you have any association with Halloween, it just diminishes this really, really quick. So don't do that to yourself. Just just watch it. it it's actually really cool. The way they did the, the masks and the villain and the whole plot to kill the children. That's actually pretty pretty goddamn awesome. So... Take some time out and rent it, watch it, buy it, whatever. Uh, you won't really be disappointed at all. This one was released in 1982, one year after Part uh, or Halloween Part 2 came out. Um, and again, I think it tried to breathe new life into the series and make it go a different direction since from what we saw, Michael Myers was dead. And I like... Like I was saying before, it just has a really unique plot, and I, for some reason, it gives a lot of slack um, because it has nothing to do with Michael Myers, which I think is really unfortunate. Um, I get kind of what I was saying because of the way it, the way it plays out. Now, of course, it kind of has its corny moments and shit that it's really kind of hard to believe, but the actors are are really solid in it, and um, and the villain, like I said, is is really creepy as shit. So, and then once you figure out the whole plot of how they're they're trying to use these Halloween masks and commercialism to kill these children and it's based off of, you know, old Halloween type spirit. It's it's pretty uh, it's pretty fucking pretty awesome. And the effects and everything in this movie are really cool and well done for the time. So, you know, it, it just is a good movie. I don't think I can really say anything necessarily bad about it. Uh, I would give it like a 7 out of 10 as far as like horror movies go. Uh, it's definitely not like an like something everyone has to see, but I think it's it's definitely worthwhile. So if you get a chance, definitely you know check it out. And it has, I will say this, it has probably one of my favorite scenes 
uh, of any of the any of the Halloween movies, with maybe the exception of four, because that that four was pretty badass, and um, uh, <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty great, and we'll watch it here in a minute. No, no, I can't prove it. You've got to believe me. Believe me. Take it off the air now, please. You've got to at least. Happy Halloween. Please excuse the interruption. We're having technical problems. Please stand by. It's time. It's time. We are experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. Dark masks, gather round your TV set. Put on your masks and watch. All witches, all skeletons, all jack o lanterns The third gather commercial, it's still on. Please, watch take off the third content. channel, the third channel. Watch. It's still running. Stop it, please. For God's sake, please stop it. There's no more time. You've got to... Please, stop it. Stop it now. Turn it off. Turn it off. Stop it. 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 Terrific scene right there. Uh, the only other thing I could say that's interesting about this movie, there's a part where uh, he finds out his girlfriend or love interest, or whatever, is uh, is a robot. And I, I don't know. I've watched it a couple times and I've never really figured out whether or not she was a robot from the beginning or they somehow replaced her at some point in the movie. But I think it's kind of funny to think that maybe he screwed the robot. <laughs> maybe that's that was a weird uh, subplot or not. But... Uh, Anyways, that's pretty cool. Watch Halloween three; it's definitely uh, definitely worth it, and uh, definitely underrated in the Halloween series. Halloween four. What can I say other than a terrific movie to reintroduce the series? Um, it's definitely not better than one. It's not like my all-time favorite, other than part one either. But it's probably my second favorite. The six being my absolute favorite. And we'll go into that later. That's controversial. But this one is my other one that I watched the most. I just think it's really, really well done. Uh, again, they changed up some characters. Dr. Loomis is still in it, and a big part of it, which is good. Uh, but they shift the focus from Jamie Lee Curtis's character over to a new character, which is uh, supposed to be her daughter. So Michael Myers is now trying to kill his niece. So... It's still following along with the plotline of the first one, but it's coming. It's a little different angle because you're dealing with a child now. But it like, again, it, it everybody does really well as far as the acting. The one thing that bothers me the most about the movie where it could have been better is, and this carried on with all of them, something went on with the masks. Every time they went to do these movies, they always try to redesign it. And for some reason, they're never able to capture the original scary design of the very very first mask and that's controversial because no one really knows 100 percent i think where it came from speculation on it was a mold of captain kirk and then i think there's also uh some controversy on actually what happened to the original original mask so they've had to redo it over over time and this one you can definitely tell it doesn't look as good as the first one but it's still it's still good as far as all the masks that they've had. It, it's not bad, but it it's kind of weird the fact that his face changes over the course of the movies. I really wish they could have kept with the very first original one because I think that was the best overall, with the exception of maybe Rob Zombie's mask. Rob Zombie's mask was pretty good, although I didn't like those movies. But this movie is definitely worth watching. It's uh, got some really good action. Uh, pretty good acting for what it is and uh, it did really well as far as when it came out for box office and really really invigorated the series and again leaves you on a ter terrific cliffhanger and uh, definitely if, if again if you only have a couple of Halloween movies to watch uh, you know watch four it's definitely worth it uh, it will get you ready for for what's to come later well that's my part one of this uh, Halloween movie review series I guess you can call it review, maybe my thoughts on it. Uh, so, and you got to kind of a little um, spoiler for the next one, saying that Halloween Six is my favorite, and that in itself will should be interesting to see because now that the producers cut out, I've seen both of them, so now I can talk a little bit more about it. But next time we're going to cover the rest of them in the series. We're going to do five, six, the producers cut of six, uh, seven, H two O. Uh, eight, unfortunately, God, I hate that movie, and then we'll, we'll talk a little bit about Rob Zombie's. Uh, movies, but I I really don't have much positive to say about that. Thanks for watching part one, and look forward to part two here in a couple days. Remember to go to multitap.com to see all the other Halloween-related videos.